Right now, more than 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease. It's gonna double in a few decades. So what does it mean for you and me? One in five women in our country will battle Alzheimer's. One in 10 men, that's the same, according to the Alzheimer's Association. So now there's some new hope in the earlier stages, but it comes with a catch. Lakembi is a drug proven to slow the progression of Alzheimer's. It targets a protein in the brain long believed to be linked to cognitive decline. And just last week, you might have seen, it was granted full approval by the FDA, making it the first drug of its kind to get the green light from the agency. The FDA's approval of Lakembi is significant. This is the first approval of what we call a disease-modifying uh, therapeutic uh, for Alzheimer's disease. All of the previous drugs have really treated uh, symptoms, um, so sort of namely the memory impairments, uh, versus really treating sort of the disease biology underlying the disease. Great news, but here's the catch. Studies show that Lakembi, it does slow the progression of Alzheimer's in 43% of men, only does the same in 12% of women. That is a huge disparity, and that matters, especially remarkable because you consider that, according to the Alzheimer's Association, close to two-thirds of Americans living with the disease are women. So what's going on here? Dr. Liana Apostolova, Associate Dean of Alzheimer's Disease Research at Indiana University School of Medicine, is with us tonight. Dr. Apostolova, this was kind of buried in an index. I read it in Axios and thought, what in the world? This is highly relevant. 12% of women. Should this have been more widely noted or noticed before the approval? So it wasn't precisely buried. The way uh, that publications work uh, in the medical industry, in the medical publication sphere, is there are page limits, word limits, and what the company or the authors want to present as the main results. The primary analysis is what we call it, which are um, what the FDA also um, requests that is, um, that is uh, absolutely pristine before they approve a drug. What the companies do and the authors do too is they place other really relevant information into the appendix so that it's out there for the public to be able to review it and to know all the details about the data. And mm -hmm. I couldn't applaud uh, um, ASI for being as transparent to publish these analysis so we can all see them and start thinking what might be going on. Right, right. Yeah, because I think the headline most of us saw is it's 27% effective. We did not know that breakdown. Why would a dementia medicine work almost four times better on men than women? Do we know? Well, I don't know for a fact that it works uh, so many times better in men than women, rather than I. what I want to know more about is whether these two Sex, the sexes, men and women, the two cohorts, subpopulations in the trial were well matched at baseline. So imagine a scenario where the women were more cognitively impaired compared to men. And what we know about these medications is that the earlier you prescribe it, the better the outcome. So if women were more impaired, they stand less chance to show an effect which will result in, exact, in exactly the same result that you are discussing now. We don't know if they're balanced on age. What we know is that the younger the individuals, the more aggressive the disease is and the less they benefit. So we don't know these very, very important uh, differences that could actually drive the results. And it might not be that sex explains the difference, but that they're not well balanced in terms of disease severity, stage of disease, genetic risk factors, age, and other very important drivers of disease progression. Okay. You know, uh, when you're talking about a life, a family, it's hard to also talk about money. Uh, for men, though, the case seems pretty strong, even at $26,000 a year, you know, if it's going to help almost half of them. But for women, is a brand new, you know, largely unknown, 12% effective medicine in, in female patients. Is that reasonable to expect insurance companies and Medicare to cover? So uh, the numbers are men had a slowing of disease progression based on a certain measure called CDR of 43% and women had 12% slowing. Um, what I would do is explain to my patients what the risks, the benefits um, of the medications are, what it showed for their specific gender, for their specific race, 
for their specific APOE genotype. That's the, the most uh, important gene in, in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, that is the common form of Alzheimer's disease that we see in the elderly. And all of that would be disentangled in the terms of risk-benefit ratio. And it's up to the patient. They should have autonomy to decide what medication they would like to go on. And because I said what they said, that we really don't know if men and women, women were com comparable at baseline. We don't know if women weren't more severely affected, which would explain then the difference. We can't say it worked less well in women. Also, okay. when we look at the comprehensively at the data, on all data points, including biomarkers, women show a benefit from the drug, just like men. It's not the same magnitude of benefit, but certainly it is a benefit. And as a woman, if I had Alzheimer's disease, I might pause and say, well, I'd rather try this because it might yeah. give me a chance to slow the disease progression. And Dr. Pastelova, that's actually something I wanted to clarify with you. Is 12% slowing of the progression an average, or could it be that some women get 90% suppression while others get... 3% or 0% because I'm thinking if I'm the individual, I think, well, I might be one of the 90% people. Give it to me. You know, how does that work? That is exactly the case. So the 12% are the average across all women in the trial. Same goes for the 43% slowing in men. And some women and some men would have a great response and others will not. And it comes to precision medicine, us doctors, to be able to identify the various risk factors that determine disease progression and response to medicine. And a lot more research needs to happen. And what the beauty is, is that with this transparent publication showing these differences with this drug in this trial, we now can actually analyze the data and identify what's causing this discrepancy and better inform and plan for the treatment of our patients in the future. Dr. Liana Apostolova, thank you so much for your time tonight, but really just thank you for your work day in and day out. I mean, this has been a slow slog, but it feels like maybe we're getting somewhere and um, we're so appreciative. No problem. It has been my pleasure to be with you.